NDC Technologies is a leading global provider of intelligent connected measurement and control solutions that has been serving a diverse range of industries for over 50 years. NDC Technologies designs, develops, and produces a wide range of precision, precision instrumentation for manufacturers involved in a broad spectrum of process applications. NDC Technologies serves customers in over 60 countries worldwide and has manufacturing facilities in Dayton, Ohio, Ohio US, and Milden, UK, with centers of excellence at each of these locations, as well as, as in Irvindale, California. The company has direct sales and support facilities in France, Germany, Italy, India, China, and Japan. We have with us on the show today, Mr. Marty Nyman, President NDC, joining from Dayton, USA. A very good morning and a very warm welcome to Insights with Nidhi Varma. Good morning and good afternoon. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Appreciate here, and we will restrict our discussions to the film and extrusion converting industry because that is our audience in India here. Excellent. Uh, your company has very strong international presence. What is the impression of the Indian market in terms of the technological standing and comparative status worldwide? Honest feedback. Well, India has been a, a critical growth market for NDC. And one of the ways that we determine that is obviously we look at the, the growth rates. And over the past several years, we've enjoyed uh, strong double digit growth in India. And, and we attribute this to uh, a number of factors. Uh, we have a, a number of multinational corporations who are investing in local facilities. And when that occurs, they bring a lot of the, the gauging and measurement solutions that we have pioneered into those facilities. But we've also uh, identified the fact that we see the, the quality bar and the, and the awareness of quality products in India increasing. You know, obviously that serves us well because our gauges are there to ensure the, the high quality of production of a product. Uh, there's other factors that include uh, the initiative of, of making in India, and we think that's contributing. Uh, the increase in packaging demand, as well as the interest in increasing automation and um, a more higher level of control over production processes, all of these are favoring the growth that we're experiencing in India. So it's, it's a vital market for us, and we're just thrilled about the activities taking place in India. Excellent. So that means uh, along with the volumes, the focus on quality is also foreseen. Um, Mr. Nyman, how do you assess the Indian market for 2020 balance and 21 year on year for your solutions in the plastic converting industry, um, primarily for the cast films, extrusion, coating, lamination? Well, there's no question, uh, Nidhi, that the, the pandemic has impacted the economy. I think you're all feeling ex experiencing that and we're not excluded. What we have seen uh, throughout the pandemic is demand for both flexible as well as pharmaceutical packaging has done quite well. And we anticipate this to continue to be the case going forward. Um, based on the end use, we do see that cast film and extrusion and lamination uh, applications have begun to start to rise. And we've got a number of new projects that have been scheduled and uh, there's continued interest uh, coming from the converter segment as well for the market. So while we've seen a slight downturn, uh, I, I know that we're going to see a, a pickup in activity as things start to level off. Uh, that's an optimistic uh, view. In your opinion, what penetration levels in the Indian market uh, you've achieved and uh, what is the comparative status in the Indian market versus the other competitors? Well, in general, we, we don't disclose specific share positions by market, but what I can tell you is that we have a, a very strong installed base in India. And as, as our, our go to market strategy was, was determined, we focused on tier one customers first. And these are really where our, our value and our, our impact is most greatly achieved. That said, we are doing a very, very active uh, market development effort, reaching out to a lot of the mid market producers now. And, and what we've experienced is, is being able to bring our, our success and our solutions into a market that's emerging where there may not have been as much awareness about the benefit of the gauging solutions that we bring. Um, and we're starting to focus our efforts on that next tier. Lastly, we have been investing in our, our presence in the India market and specifically with a repair center in New Delhi, 
as well as making sure that we've got sales and services support throughout the country to be able to provide exceptional service to our customers. Yes, we have heard about your exceptional uh, customer service even in the pandemic times. Um, Mr. Amman, how much share of your total business uh, India accounts for from the plastic uh, processing industry, a, a ballpark, and for which specific applications? Could you be able to share that? Well, unfortunately, again, this is one of the things that uh, we're unable to disclose the specifics of. Um, but what I can tell you, when we step back and look at the India market, and specifically for the online gauging solutions, film extrusion, and coding, and converting applications, uh, we see us as one of the, the one of the top providers of the market. Um, that said, we've got a very, very aggressive sales team who will not rest until they have the top position. So we will continue to see growth in this market. Yes, we are uh, also supporting them in that. Um, where Were there any specific control and measurement solutions that saw a surge during the pandemic time would be in the flexible packaging, hygiene, and pharma mostly? You know, I think that's a great question, Nidhi, because uh, what we observed and experienced uh, in the pandemic, and we're still experiencing some of this, is um, because many of our customers uh, were, were forced to operate with a limited staff, limited production staff, that raised the level of, of awareness and importance of process control and more specifically automation. So what we've experienced is, is in, in, from our customers is how might they operate their facilities with fewer resources, but still maintain production capacity and quality. So that is one factor that uh, I think the pandemic has, has increased the emphasis on throughout. But more specifically, from a product standpoint, there are a number of life critical products like hygienic packaging and medical tubing, um, wire and cable for medical devices and some of the essential food products. Uh, those have all been very, very robust in terms of the demand for our solutions. Yeah, in one example, we had a, um, a manufacturer who made uh, medical tubing, clear medical tubing that's used for oxygen delivery. And as you can imagine, with the demand for uh, medical ventilators, uh, that, that has been a very, very strong market opportunity for us to support our customers. Brilliant. <clears throat> there are a variety of technologies that you offer, such as beta, X-ray, laser, infrared, and optical. What is the basis of offering a particular technology solution to customers for different kind of films, BOPP, BOPT, multi-layer blown, films opaque, transparent, metallized, all of them? How do you kind of uh, offer them the correct solution? Yeah, I think that you said at the beginning uh, of our discussion today that one of the things that we're particularly uh, proud of is, is the fact that we've been in business for 50 years. 50 years is a, is a long time. And we've learned a lot of things as a result of that. And so one of the things you've observed is we do have a number of different sensor technologies that are used to be able to provide the right solution to the customer. Uh, and let me, let me just share a little bit of, of detail as far as how we do this. Uh, for example, we look at what is it that they, what, what's the material that the customer wishes to produce? And a lot of times that really determines what is the best technology to be applied. For example, infrared gauges, uh, when you have the ability to, to, uh, to measure a transparent product, uh, it's fabulous. But if you've got a, a thick product, uh, for example, metal, um, where the IR will not penetrate, we have to go to another technology to do that. So we look at things like what is the transmission type of, of measurement that we want to measure. Uh, in some cases, we look at how do we determine the basis weight of the material, which is grams per square meter. Uh, we look at laser gauges, which measure more true thickness of the product. Um, in some cases where there's a monolayer product like PP or PET or PE, we really look at basis weight because that gives us a very, very accurate measurement to determine what is the best and appropriate uh, means of measuring this. The deciding factor is, is what is the, um, the degree of accuracy that the customer needs? Yeah, one of the things we've learned is we don't need to put a high resolution gauge on a customer application that really has a uh, plus or minus 5% thickness tolerance versus a plus or minus 0.1% tolerance. So again, we look at material, we look at uh, what is it that they wish to measure? What is the quality expectations? What is the consistency of the process that's, that's used to produce the product? 
And, I, and I'll leave you with this. This is um, one, of the, the, one of the things we're quite proud of is that we've implemented solutions in over 100,000 different customer applications. It's, it's absolutely amazing. And through those applications, we've acquired over a billion hours of operating experience in terms of our gauges have been operating for over a billion hours. It just, it's, it's, it's humbling that this is what we've learned, but uh, we're very proud of what we bring and how we're able to help our customers. Brilliant. Uh, thank you for sharing that because that you have a huge amount of data to kind of uh, uh, provide the best what the customer needs based on diff different parameters. Uh, Mr. Nalman, are there certain types of solutions which are very popular uh, with your customers in other parts of the world, but somehow the Indian converters are not taking it and vice versa. Some of them that Indian converters are really utilizing and they're not so popular in the other customers across the world. That's a great question. Uh, for flexible packaging and converting industries, what we've experienced is, is there's still um, a fair amount of commoditization in the India market. Uh, and there are a few examples where some of our, our manufacturing uh, customers are developing a very specialized solution that we're working with them. But right now, um, we're seeing a mix in terms of the types of, of applications that are being used in India. And conversely, uh, not, none of the uh, applications that you mentioned come to mind where there's something truly unique going on in India that's being exported or not being done elsewhere in the markets. Uh, understood that currently the way the system works is that random checking is done and then you do statistical analysis. Will there come a time when there is a system that does 100% checking? Yeah, it, um, I find when I try to describe our solutions, uh, that's a, it's a common question that does come up. And, and here's, I'll give you uh, two, two, two responses to your question. Uh, the first is that we do have a scanning system, which if you think about it, if you've got a roll of plastic going across a production and our scanners are going across the line, it creates a zigzag pattern essentially. And with that, we are able to determine that from that, we are able to get a measurement through that that does make sure and ensure that the customer's product is 100% within the specifications. So it's a logical question to ask, is if we are scanning the breadth of the product coming off, are we able to assure the 100% of the product produced is within tolerances? And the answer is yes, we are able to do that. And we have done this. We have done a scanning solution that does measure 100% of the width of the product. The challenge, uh, Nidhi, is that naturally that comes with a higher cost. And there's always a trade-off with any of these applications. But in, in our experience has shown that we're, through our scanning solutions, we are able to measure that and still get 100% quality. I think that is what the customer wants. If they are confirmed of the 100% quality, then whatever system you're providing, uh, they, sh they will be happy with. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, Mr. Neyman, uh, the giveaways and the waste can be reduced substantially with your solutions, which is going to be the need of the hour now. What is truly the economic performance in the terms of cost savings and cost reduction? Uh, what kind of ballpark payback period is expected from your systems by the converters? Yeah, I, I think it's, that is one of the top questions that is being asked more and more of our customers is they're very keen to understand how, if they're going to invest in a higher engaging solution, when might they receive a return on that investment? And when we, we work with our customers, we find that there's a, a formula that really determines that. Um, and th that includes uh, what is the end product quality specification? Is it a high tolerance or is it a moderate tolerance? What is the cost of the raw material that they're using for this? Uh, additionally, what is the, the stability and the, the control capabilities of the product lines itself? And uh, lastly, what is the margin that, that the customer has on their end product? In some cases, if it is a thin margin and every, every penny counts on the production, that determines whether or not they're gonna see a, a quicker or a longer term payback. So when we work with the customer, we go through all of these requirements and then we were able to come up with a quantified uh, calculation of the return. Uh, there's no hard and fast rule, but we've seen many cases where once the customer has installed our gauging solution, they do see a payback well within a one year period. That's a very good return there. Uh, Mr. Neyman, some solutions, uh, do they have radioactive materials uh, and 
how the safety is taken care of. Then it must be just for sharing with our customers. Yeah, and I think that's a, a legitimate concern and we've been developing and delivering re, uh, those types of solutions for over 20 years. So let me, let me spend a few moments talking about that. Uh, we've been using this for decades and what we've experienced is that there is both the maturity in the technology as well as the regulatory uh, controls that are necessary to ensure safety. For example, the gauges are designed and verified that in a fail safe, should there be a loss of power, that there will be no uh, vulnerability, there will be no safety issues. So the gauges are designed to operate uh, if there's a loss of air or electricity. There's also labeling, there's um, uh, industrial controls, the interlocks that make sure that if there were to be a failure of the line, that there would be no compromise in safety. But we also uh, are adamant that with our services team, we are, are helping our customers to ensure that the operators are properly trained that there is a, a clear protocol so that, that they have a full awareness of what the necessary safety um, practices are necessary to put in place. We ensure that there are radiation safety officers that are on staff in country to be able to support our customers in making sure the safety is sustained. And last, we have to make sure that things such as our packaging as well as our, our shipping uh, ensure that the, uh, the safety of the gauges are maintained from the minute they leave our facilities to the time that they're installed on the customer's lines. So we've got a very, very exceptional track record. We work with all the regulatory agencies and that is maintaining the safety of our customers' locations. Super, all taken care of then. Uh, Mr. Neiman, do you have any plans in Shanghai and uh, what are your plans for China? Yeah, we do not have any, any production facilities in China, but we've, we've had a presence in China for well over 20 years. And as you can imagine, it is a, is a robust market in terms of our growth objectives. And we are continuing to work both in China as well as the Southeast Asia market. Okay, well respected. Uh, we do not see NDC as very aggressive in marketing. Is that a company policy or and you just allow your products to speak for themselves? I wish that the products uh, effectively sold themselves and we, we would, wouldn't have to market, but we do do marketing, Nidhi, but what, what we've learned in, in our marketing is, is we really want to make sure that the right message gets to the right uh, end person. So we do leverage print and digital. Uh, as you know, we are active in exhibitions. Um, our India team, I think, is one of the strongest teams in terms of leveraging social media as well as in-person or customer contacts. So uh, we, we believe that our, our 50 years of legacy, our experience base uh, is worth something and, and speaks for itself, but we still have to market and we still have to maintain a presence. So it is a key part of our business. Well taken. Uh, as you mentioned, the Make in India mission is very strong now. Any plans of uh, putting your manufacturing uh, units here in India? You already have a very strong base in terms of customers as well as your team here? I think that's a, uh, it's a, it's a complex question. Uh, we do not currently have any plans right now. As I said at the beginning of our discussion, uh, India is a vital and a key strategic market for NDC. We're going to continue to grow and expand our presence. The decision about manufacturing uh, requires a, a significant review of, of the overall investment required as well as the returns and our ability to support the market needs. Well taken again. Um, I saw that NDC has uh, <clears throat> launched a new vision and uh, purpose statement. What is it new that's coming out of the uh, NDC organization in terms of new innovations, new products, anything that you want to share uh, with our customers through this message? Yeah, and thank you for noticing that. We literally just announced that two days ago and our vision really is aligning with the fact that our customers, and it's a reflection of our customers' needs, that they are asking us not just to provide another measurement signal, they really need us to provide intelligence that truly helps them operate both their production facilities as well as their business much more effectively. And we see that as a, a, a very opportune time to align what it is that we provide and the value we deliver against their needs. So you're gonna see an increasingly, uh, an, uh, an increased number of solutions where we focus on not just the gauge itself and the gauging solution, but also with a level of intelligence. How might we help them operate their lines more efficiently to reduce waste, as you mentioned earlier, 
to operate lines with potentially fewer resources, yet still to be able to grow their business. So some of the solutions include our Haze Pro, which measures Haze, our Slim Track line, uh, as well as our Series 9 uh, infrared gauge, which was launched earlier this year. And we're just, we're just excited about the, the new solutions that we're bringing to our customers and aligning with this new vision statement. Wonderful. All of us will be looking forward for that. Uh, Mr. Nyman, would you like to give a message to all the Indian converters and my industry fellows who will be watching this interview from your learnings and experience from this pandemic especially? Yeah, and, and I, again, I'm grateful for the opportunity to speak with you and, and your, uh, your, your observers and, and listeners. I, I would offer a couple of things. One is um, the pandemic has taught us to make sure that you have to have a plan and more importantly, continue to revisit your plan to make sure that it's still effective and still addressing the needs uh, and the safety needs of your, your employees. The second is uh, I, I encourage you to be creative with how you serve your customers in that uh, we've got many great examples with our team in India who despite what, at the times where they were prohibited from traveling, they were still reaching out to customers and being able to do whatever they can to support them, whether that was arranging for delivery of, of products and uh, spare parts and services, as well as remotely accessing the solutions to be able to help. Remember, challenging times can bring out very difficult situations in our, in our society and our markets, but it can also bring out the very best in our, our teams. And that is one of the things that I encourage all of your, your listeners to, to be mindful of the fact that despite the challenges, it can also be a great time for, for doing some great things. What a beautiful way to put your message, Mr. Neyman. I totally agree with you. A little extra effort made during this time will go a long way between the relationships that are built between partners, business partners, as well as personal. We are going to thank you so much for your time today, your message, your views, your perspective, the details of your solution that you provided to all our viewers will be very beneficial to them. And we are going to see you soon on the other side. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank you.